everybody and uh, welcome to this session which is called Mazes, Maps, Rhymes and Raps. Um, and if you're uh, watching this on video, welcome to the past. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, the, actual, the, the talk actually has three parts. Mazes, Maps, Rhymes and Raps. Uh, and I have, I, I believe I have 45 minutes. So maybe that's about 15 minutes for each of those sections. Um, I will show some information behind me here, and uh, I will probably share some slides as well when, the, when there's too much detailed information. So you need to, uh, you might need to do things with the screen if you want to see um, me big, you have to go to the view in the top right hand corner and um, and you can toggle between speaker view and gallery view. I'm going to look on gallery view so I can see everybody. Well, not everybody, but uh, I can I can see a few pages of people. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having your cameras on though that you've got cameras. It's always nice to see some faces as well. So yes, uh, part one is uh, mazes. Uh, well, let me explain what the parts are about really before I launch into the mazes. We've got um, mazes are activities which are especially good for those aspects of pronunciation which um, are more cerebral uh, awareness raising because uh, maybe you think that pronunciation is all about articulation and uh, mouth and creating sounds but there's also an important part of it which is uh, awareness of patterns in the language and mazes are a really good simple activity type um, sorry I was just I was just looking in the chat there um, yeah maze is a really good simple activity type um, for working on those the slides by the way for this talk the which I'm going to show either here or my slide share I did put them in the chat uh, Monique tells me that she's unable to get them. Could I ask uh, if uh, somebody from Teaching House could uh, download those slides as well? So you, you can, um, okay, Monique's got them, right. You can download those slides uh, and you can actually scroll ahead through them if you want and then you can see what I'm going to say. And if you don't like it, you can, you can leave. <laughs> the um, maps are a particularly good activity type for those aspects of pronunciation which are interactive, making yourself understood and understanding others. Great for um, airworks, because after all, pronunciation isn't, isn't really about sounding good. It's about understanding, making yourself understood. So um, maps are really good for that type of pronunciation activity. And then rhymes and raps, great for various things. For example, uh, training for connected speech, also good for preparing for listening because hearing, hearing connected speech gives you, you can store it and then you recognize it later when you hear it. So rhymes and raps are great for connected speech and listening. So those are the three activity types. For each type, I'm gonna give a few examples, two or three examples, and then uh, tell you how to make your own so that you can adapt the activities for your own particular classes. Map number one, no, maze number one is this. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing it might be a little bit small for you to see, but I'm gonna start us off by explaining 
with it here so I can point. You, um, you have to start on this black word here where it says run and finish down here where it says fun. Thank you, Anya, you think it's big enough, right? You've got to go from run to fun, going across these paving stones. And you can go, you can step on a paving stone only if it has uh, the same vowel sound as this word, run. So, um, three options there, you've got, uh, Run, to use or up. Simona, if you've got long legs, I guess you could go to mum. Um, if you've got shorter legs, you might need to uh, step over one of these and before you get to mum. Like up, up says Ellie. Okay, run to up and then mum. Okay, we're on our way. Where next? You can put the, you can put your answers in the, Oh, we're going to study. Yes, study. And drum. Carolina's way ahead. Okay. David is taking us to cup and bus. Um, um, cut, Monique. Yes, thank you. Ooh, we're going so fast. Luck, luck, luck. Wait a minute. Where? Uh, hut. Yes, hut. Um, club. Club. Uh, uh, hug. How are you going to get to hug? You've got to have long legs for that. Wait a minute. Us. Oh, us. And hug. Uh, and then ugly. Fun. Well done, everybody. This is uh, an example of a maze. Oh, there are loads more freely available from this website which you can check it out later. Um, once you've done that, you get your students to go through like you just did, and then you can um, focus on spelling patterns. Mazes are really good to focus on spelling patterns. Look, for example, at tube. Tube is not in the right path. And look at the E at the end. If you remove the E from tube, you get tub, which would be in the right path, but with an E, no. That E is doing something. It's changing the, the vowel, so the E is not a silent E. It's, or you might call it a silent E, but it's not really silent. It's uh, having a retrospective influence on the preceding vowel. So sometimes called magic E as well, this. So that's an interesting spelling pattern, very worth knowing. Um, then there's things like, uh, look down here, you've got hut and hurt, only one letter difference, but it makes, it makes a difference. That R there, in my accent, I don't even pronounce it, but it changes the vowel before it, kind of makes it, longer. So hurt isn't in the path. Hut is in the path. So that the uh, when you have an R after a vowel like this, it changes the vowel. And that's something that students should know. So that's what I'm talking about, looking for little spelling patterns, um, asking students to, to notice any spelling patterns and remember them. These are useful um, things to learn. Um, so th the website is a bit small to read down there. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a link. I'm going to put a link. Um, here we go. I'll put that into the chat. There's a, a link, the first link there, spelling mazes. That's where there are some more of these. 
next, the next maze uh, follows a similar principle, but you, you might think it looks more like a grammar maze because you have to go from A to B only if in the third person present simple, you have to add ES. So for example, talks, you have to add an S. So that's not in the path. Counts, just an S. But teaches is an ES, teaches. So you go in that way. Uh, so let's go through that. Uh, teaches, washes, mixes. Uh, mixes, switches, dresses, says Carolina, yep. And then we have uh, kisses from Kasha, yep. Uh, bushes, bushes, yep. Pushes, catches, catches, presses, watches, wishes, and guesses. Thank you. Uh, fixes, searches. Karina's got finishes and that's it. You get to the end. It looks a bit like a, a grammar exercise, but actually it's pronunciation because this grammar depends on pronunciation. How do you know when to put an ES on these verbs? Well, I guess the simple answer is it's pretty difficult to say teachers without the e, the vowel there. Teach, teach, I guess you could, but um, speakers of English, um, uh, feeble around the mouth, we can't, uh, we can't say teach. Uh, so it's just about easiness. If it's too difficult to say without a vowel, we say the vowel. Talks is no problem. Talks, at least uh, where speakers of English find that quite easy. Talks, but teach, teach, no. That's the simple answer. There are more complicated explanations, like Sean suggests giving all of the spellings, C-H, S-H, etc. You can go that way. Uh, Maria is, is giving the phonetic answer. Sibilance, if the last consonant in the root word is sibilant, then you add the extra vowel. But um, most of my students don't know the word sibilant, sadly. So you just go with the simple rule. Okay. Um, Marcellus says if the sound hisses, yes. So there, there are possibly other ways of doing it. Or, or you, could, you could get your students to work it out and find their own explanation, one that worked for them. Um, the next maze is a, sim a very, very simple version because I want to show you how to make one. Right, so this simple maze you, have, you can go through the word only if it has the consonant w, 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 the W consonant. So uh, you've got west, w, w, west. And then you've got these doorways, look, you can go horizontal or vertical next. So after west, where are we going to go? We're going to quick, quick. Interestingly, tweet. Um, uh, you can't get to work unless you've got really long legs. Now we're going to go to tweet and then uh, swim and 
wood and uh, when queen once and twice which quarter quit a woman and that's it here's how you make it so <clears throat> you uh first of all you put you get a list of words that contain the target sound a list of those words try to include some where it's not so obvious for example quick there's no w in this word so that's quite interesting anyway so you get this list of words with the w in it and then you write them in a continuous path from a to b and that's the uh, that's the correct answer all of the other ones are empty at this point I've given you an empty one on the slides, by the way, so you can make your own. Having done that, you next need to fill in the rest of them with words that don't have that sound. And ideally, put um, distractors which look like they might have it, but they don't. For example, wrong. It looks like it has, has a w because of the W in it, but no, it doesn't have a W. So in order to do this activity, the students are going to have to be discerning. They need to focus on pronunciation, not spelling. Uh, you can make your own quite easily. You can get your students to make them also. I sometimes do that. Um, so you give them an empty grid or let them just draw their own. You can make a grid. OK, I put little doorways in here, but that's not essential. Just make a normal grid in Microsoft Word, for example, and then type in the words. You can make a grid quite easily like this. So you can adapt this activity for stuff that you're working on. And that's the end of mazes, mazes. It's quite interesting that uh, students, when they're doing these, they're usually um, not silent. You can hear them saying the words to themselves, from themselves whilst they're doing it, uh, sub-vocalizing. So um, they get some sort of practice as well as uh, awareness raising. Anyway. The next uh, category of activity is um, maps. Here's an example of a map. I um, I made one of the of the UK actually. Um, I, I didn't know um, where people were going to be from here. And I, I guess there's lots of people from all over the place. Uh, so ideally. You can have a map uh, for that's relevant for your students. The one that I put on, in the uh, link in the chat before was for a, a whole of Europe map. I have United States map as well, and uh, one for South America. So uh, find, get a map that's relevant, and you put minimal pairs along the top and down the sides. Minimal pairs being two words which differ by one sound. For example, blow, blue, soup, soap, and toe, two. Then you've got show and shoe, boat and boot, grew and grow. Um, and the idea is that you're just going to tell people where to go by giving two words, like coordinates. Let me just uh, expand part of this map here so you can see a bit better. So, for example, if I say um, boat soup, 
that would be boat and soup. You're going along from boat, down from soup, and get to Belfast. Um, okay, so let me say another one. Show blue. Show blue. Carolina says Glasgow. Amanda says Bally Castle. Hmm. You see, uh, if Amanda's gone to Bally Castle, it means that I didn't pronounce it clearly enough because I, I wanted to go to Glasgow. Simona's gone to Dumfries. Oh my God. Um, I'm clearly going to have to be very, very careful about how to pronounce this. I'll try one more time. Grew, soup. Dublin, yes. The miracle of communication. Thank you. So you did this a few times with uh, you to the class and then let your students do it in pair work or small groups. And the interesting thing about uh, this kind of map activity is that uh, nobody is to blame when things go wrong. It's a cooperative business communicating. Um, so it's a matter of uh, getting the other person to understand what you want. Nobody's to blame if it goes wrong, you just have to try again. And that's reality. Um, I like activities also like this, which um, self-correct. You don't need to be uh, hanging on the students and uh, whipping them. Um, you can just let them discover for themselves. Oh, you go into a different place from me. Okay, so what do I have to do to get you to the same place? Um, <clears throat> the next activity, the next map type activity I want to show you is based on the misunderstanding you see here. Hey Anna, got any paper? Sure Jim, you want to piss? Uh, no, no, just some paper please. Yeah, a piece of paper, just one shit. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a little mis misunderstanding here. On account of uh, confusing two vowel sounds, and uh, I quite like to use uh, examples with taboo words like this where possible, because it really sticks in the mind. It, it tells students you have to be careful with these vowels here. You can't just go ah piss peas piss peas. It's the same thing, not the same thing at all. Um, and this is a way of making that point. Anyway, so those two vowel sounds are the subject of the next map, which is this. Um, we're going from number one, start of journey, all the way to one of these international destinations along the top. We've got these words down the side here. Look, you've got living, leaving, hit, heat, Slip, sleep, fill, feel. I'm going to say a sentence with one of those. And you have to uh, go either this way, call it west, if it's that word, and this way, east, if it's that word. And I'll go through one example with you now. Number one, I'm living with mum. West. Um, don't eat the plates. So you can't see the words now, I'm in the way. Sorry about that. I have to use my magic wand. Uh, right, so you got to here. Um, now, don't uh, slip on the ice. Uh, we're going west there, up to there, and uh, can you feel it? 
and we get to Cairo. Very nice. And that's how the game works. I'll tell you what, students usually uh, don't understand quite as quickly as, as you all are doing. Um, so you might need to go through a few examples together this way. And then you could start doing it blind. In other words, without Mr. Pointer. Like, so let's do it. I'll just say the, the, the word by itself, just to make this faster. Number one, leaving. Number two, heat. Number three, slip. Number four, Phil. Where did you get? Mexico, Carolina says. Mexico, Mexico, yes. Yes, it's Mexico. That's how the game works. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got a blank version of this on the slides as well. So you can use this game with any minimal pairs that you want to, any minimal pairs. Uh, this was the uh, was a game I put in my first book, which was Pronunciation Games. Back in 1995, that was published. This particular game has proved to be the most popular of all of the games in that book. People always th say to me, this was, the, this was the game for me. It's very simple and seems to be fun. The students seem to like it. Uh, when they get to the wrong place, they really want to know what happened. How, how did it go wrong? So I recommend you try that one. Uh, the next map is a street map. You've got um, these uh, really attractive mm, coffee shops here, look, uh, with the lovely names A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And uh, I'm going to tell you where to go. The streets have rather inconveniently got names which are similar. Lucket Lane, Locked Lane, Livid, Lived Road, Livid Road, and Filled Street and Filled Street. So it's a little bit inconvenient. You're going to have to pronounce the streets very carefully in order to get to the same place. So for example, if I say it's on, uh, meet me on the corner of Locked Lane and Filled Street. Locked Lane, Filled Street. That's going to be this place where they serve fantastic cappuccino. Um, okay, so where are we going next? It's on the corner of Village Street and Lived Road. E, 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 F, E, F, F. Some people are going to F. Ooh, okay. Most people are going to E. I'm going to E, so if we're going to E, that would be most of us are going to E. Some people are starting a, a breakout room over an F. Um, you'll obviously have noticed that this has a lot to do with the ED past tense endings, which students, Spanish speaking students, for example, many others as well, they tend to pronounce the E in the past tense, like filled as filled, uh, livid. And uh, what we're trying to do is encourage them not to do that. So in this game, in order to succeed in this game, they're going to have to um, not do that because otherwise they're going to end up going to the wrong place. If your student wants to say this, but they mispronounce it livid, livid road, then the, the listener is probably going to think it's this one. So the game 
is intended to drive them towards uh, differentiating between words like this. Um, these street maps are really easy to make. So I put a blank one on the slides and you can just uh, write your own street names, um, putting minimal pairs in. Here's one pair, locked, locked, locked and locked, livid, lived and livid and filled and filled in those pairs of streets. And that's pretty easy to make. The time has come to move on to the next topic, which was rhymes and raps. Here we go. These are in the handout. Everything's in the handout. Yes, indeed. Um, first rap or rhyme has to do with this. How do you think she pronounced this word? Concrete yeah. table. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. She said, she said, comfortable, like uh, many of your students do, no doubt. Comfortable. Uh, and so it's led to this little nonsense exchange. We uh, we try we try to convince our students that there's no table in comfortable, right? So here's a little um, rhyme to try and make that point. I knew a young woman called Mabel who slept on a kitchen table. She made herself comfortable, head on a vegetable, never knew how she was able. The uh, red, sorry, the pink dots here represent the rhythm. Uh, this format of rhyme is a limerick. And uh, so each line has four beats, but the last one is a silent one, like this. I knew a young woman called Mabel who slept on the kitchen table. She made herself comfortable, head on a vegetable, never knew how she was able. Um, one thing I do with limericks like this is get um, somebody in the class to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then simultaneously over the top of that num counting, you can get, you, you can demonstrate saying the rhyme yourself, and then you can get the class to say the rhyme. Half the class doing the numbers, half the class doing the rhyme. Um, I've put the missing syllable in small here, comfortable, because most speakers cut that syllable out. Comfortable, vegetable. Um, students need to know that at least for their listening. If your students say comfortable with the, with the syllable, that's not a, not a problem, they're intelligible, but they certainly need to be aware of the fact that as listeners, they'll probably not hear that syllable. They also need to know that table, table, table doesn't sound the same as table, 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 so that they don't end up doing what uh, the waitress did in the last photograph. Okay, that was uh, um, a limerick. <laughs> the next one is a, a rap focusing on um, the minimal pair of e i that we saw before on one of the maps. For example, fit, feet, uh, sit, seat, bit, and beat, somewhere in beat. Beat, yeah, goes like this. 
You won't get fit just sitting on a seat. If you want to get fit, got to get up on your feet. Don't fill that seat. Got to move a little bit. Get your feet to the beat. Feel the heat. That's it. You won't get fit just sitting on a seat. If you want to get fit, got to get up on your feet. Don't fill that seat. Got to move a little bit. Get your feet to the beat. Feel the heat. That's it. Uh, what you do with this is you can get your students uh, to uh, try saying it maybe do one line at a time uh, you say one line and they say they repeat it you can do two lines and then they repeat the two well let's try that uh you can repeat after me but uh, maybe uh, leave yourself on mute because otherwise there'll be trouble you won't get fit just sitting on a seat Get fit, gotta get up on your feet. <laughs> uh, you're going ahead, you're going ahead. I want you to repeat, repeat after me. Oh, sorry. Uh, wait a minute, uh, let me see who's doing, who's speaking there. You can stay, you can keep yourself unmuted, that person who just spoke then, who was it? Ah, you're not admitting it. All right, well, anyway. It you was me. Uh, was it you? Was it, is it, <laughs> I believe you. I believe it your voice. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Chris, you're on. Okay. Oh, Chris, you've got to unmute yourself. Oh, I was yeah, just yeah. saying that I thought it was Lizzie. <laughs> oh, you thought it was Lizzie? Yes. Uh, Lizzie's saying it's not. Rapper. I'm not that good a rapper, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> okay. Look, look, since Chris has been so forward, uh, it's Chris. Okay, Chris, you're on. Uh, repeat after me. You won't get fit just sitting on a seat. You won't get fit just sitting on a seat. If you want to get fit, got to get up on your feet. If you want to get fit, got to get up on your feet. Don't fill that seat, got to move a little bit. Don't fill that seat, got to move a little bit. Get your feet to the beat, feel the heat, that's it. Get your feet to the beat, feel the heat, that's it. Ah, thank you. That was... um more successful than usual in the sense, in the sense that uh, doing uh, choral drilling online is often a recipe for disaster <laughs> because of the time delay. But uh, it seemed to work all right. So I guess you could just get uh, one volunteer from the class to unmute, maybe get the, the rest to remain muted and you can just keep an eye on them by camera. Make sure they're participating. Um, usually uh, the students have a bit of difficulty with a, a line, so you can you can focus on smaller bits, you know. The, the last pair, for example, kick your feet to the beat, feel the heat, that's it. Uh, usually they find that pretty tricky. So you can just do a little bit. Get your feet, get your feet. Get your feet, 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 get your feet and make it into a loop and just say it over and over and get and get them to join in to the beat 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 get your feet to the beat get your feet to the beat get your feet to the beat like that kind of thing drilling in small segments over and over and it's, it's even got a certain rap flavor to it even if you're just doing one line it's got a certain rhythm uh, that's what happens you see if you repeat bits of English or any language over and over and over it turns into a rap uh, by magic what's not to like so that's that um, and I think I have just one more um, which I'll, I'm probably going to share on this share screen because it has a lot of uh, the, the writing's a bit small. But I'm going to have to fast forward to find it. Anyway. There we go. This story is called Nightmare Hotel. And uh, I've indicated with blue the past tense endings and the way that they link to 
a, a word which comes after when that word begins with a vowel. For example, walked up, I walked up the hill, walked up. It's, it links, there's linking going on. So I'm focusing on two things here, past tense endings and linking. Anyway, so listen to the story. And when I get to the end, can you suggest how it continues? I walked up the hill to the nightmare hotel. I stopped at the door, but I couldn't see the bell. I knocked and I waited in the cold and windy night. I looked in the window, but there wasn't any light. That's when I noticed the door was open wide. Then it started raining, so I walked inside. The door closed behind me. I asked, who's there? That's when I noticed the rats on the stairs. I turned around to leave, but I couldn't see the door. That's when I noticed the body on the floor. Then the body moved. The woman wasn't dead. She told me her story. This is what she said. What did she say? Jennifer, I walked up the hill, she says. Exactly. That's exactly what she said. She said this. Um, okay, Alan wants to kill her off, but um, uh, actually she said, I walked up the hill to the Nightmare Hotel. I stopped at the door, but I couldn't see the bell. I knocked and I waited in the cold and windy night. I looked in the window, but there wasn't any light, etc. And it goes all round again. And when she reaches the end, it goes back to the beginning and continues again. It's a claustrophobic nightmare poem. Once you start this poem, you can never stop. But at least you get plenty of practice. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you can all you can do things like um, back chaining with this. For example, the first line, walked up the hill. You can do back chaining, which is um, a way of getting the student to focus attention on the connected speech. For example, they repeat after you and then start from the end. Hill, the hill, up the hill, top the hill, walked up the hill, I walked up the hill. You're building it up from the end, little by little. It's very interesting if you can build in a surprising and a linking thing, like that stage when I said, tup the hill. I'm, I'm saying it like it sounds, I'm doing the linking, and that helps to focus the attention on the linking. Um, is, is this hard to teach when the students can't see your mouth very well? I, I don't know. Can you see my mouth very well? I don't know. It depends how big you've got the uh, different parts of your screen. I think it would probably work. But uh, generally speaking, when you're teaching pronunciation, you really want your mouth to be visible. In fact, you may want to put your mouth way up to the camera in a way that you would never do in the real classroom. You can see all my bad teeth when I do that. All right, so that was, uh, that was a nightmare hotel. And um, I, I would I encourage you to write your own rhymes and raps. Um, sorry, Dave is rushing off, so he's going to miss this one. Um, but uh, you can do, it's, it's not rocket science. For example, I was working on um, past tense endings and I just got a few verbs and put them together. Knocked and waited, knocked and waited, closed and locked, closed and locked, wanted it to open, 
wanted it to open, waited, knocked, waited, knocked, to, uh, to make, to write a, a rap like that, a rhyme. All, all it took was a few verbs and the word and, and, and this bit of phraseology here. And I got a rhyme out of these locked and knocked. Ideally, a rhyme is nice. <laughs>